Here's the second one from verses 13 and 14. We serve in our area of giftedness. We serve God and we serve in the church in the area in which He has gifted us. Look again at verses 13 and 14. He says, Until I come, devote yourself to the public reading of Scripture, to exhortation, to teaching. Do not neglect the gift that you have, which was given you by prophecy when the council of elders laid their hands on you. Here's what we know about Timothy. He was a very gifted teacher. But sometimes, and that seems to be what my spiritual gift as well, but people like Timothy and me, and I, again, I think I have so much in common with Timothy, we look at other people and their gifts and we say, oh, if I was only like him, or if I had gifts like her, God could really use me. Paul was an evangelist. Oh, if I could win people to Christ, then I would really be a servant. Or some, some people who have the gift of hospitality, or mercy, or faith, or giving. Oh, if I had the gift of giving and I could give away with my time or with my resources, then I could really please God. That's not it at all. It's very important for us to know and understand how God has gifted us. And Paul is saying to Timothy, Timothy, look, God made you a teacher, so teach. Read the scriptures, give exhortation, and teach these people. Help them know what they're supposed to believe. There's a place in Scripture where Paul and Timothy had met 13 years earlier, approximately 13 years earlier, and Timothy was already using his gifts then. He's been a teacher for as long as, as he's been a follower of Christ, probably. I go back in my own life. As I look back, I say, you know, I have always had a heart and a passion to teach. And when I say teach, I mean I like to take complicated things and explain them in simple terms. The first time that I ever taught Sunday school in our church, I don't know if you have Sunday school here, our children's ministry on Sunday morning, I think I was 13 or 14 years old and I taught a little a group of three or four boys that were in the third and fourth grade. I don't know who saw in me an ability to teach, but they said, Bruce, we'd like you to teach these third and fourth grade boys. They're just Third and fourth grade boys would be seven or eight or nine years old, and I loved it. And from the time I was a teenager, uh, through high school and into college and into seminary, into life, I have always had a desire to teach. In fact, I, I say it with uh, almost a bit of sadness, I think I would rather teach than be in a class. Because I, I like the study. I, I love to dig deep into the Word and say, can I show you what this Word means? Can I show you how this is applied? I, I say that because that's essentially what Paul is saying to Timothy. Timothy, don't neglect the gift you have. Don't wish for another one. Don't try to be like me. Use what God has given you. He says, don't you remember? Don't you remember how that was affirmed when the elders gathered around you, placed their hands on you, and prayed for you? He said, Timothy, God is going to use you to be a teacher. Timothy, I want you to use the gifts that God has given you. And you might say to me, well, I don't know what I'm gifted at. I don't know how God has gifted me. Maybe you're very young and you're just early in your Christian life. And you say, I don't know what that gift is. Maybe you've been a Christian for a long time and you say, I still don't know what my gift is. Let me give you some advice on that. If I could ask you in a question, this is what I would say. What do you enjoy doing for the Lord that doesn't even seem like work? It's just a joy or it's just a pleasure to you. That might be your gift. Depending on how you read the scriptures, the, the, the list of gifts any, ranges anywhere from 18 to 25 different gifts. You can examine the scriptures on that. In fact, I, I am aware that they're planning a whole course on spiritual gifts. You might, if you're curious about that, you might to want to wait for that future course. But an easy question for you to look in your own heart is, what do I do, what do I enjoy serving the Lord that comes easily for me. For me, it's teaching. It's like breathing for me. Some of you say, well, I enjoy having people in our home. Uh, maybe I have the gift of hospitality. Some of you say, um, I love to tell people about Jesus Christ. Uh, it's like breathing for me. Great. Some of you say, you know, every time I have some money in my pocket and I see a need, I just give money to that or I give my time to that. Your gift might be giving. 
Some of you say, you know, every time I'm in a group of people and there's a need for a leader, it seems like I'm able to rise up and become the leader of the group. You might have the gift of leadership. Some of you say, you know, every time I'm listening to someone teach, I hear things that the teacher says that are a little bit wrong. Is it maybe you have the gift of discernment or wisdom. I think that every one of you who are listening to this should, should have this sense of intrigue to say, I wonder how God has gifted me. So the first thing that you can do is to simply say, what do I do that is almost natural or easy for me? The second thing I would suggest to you is this, ask someone else. Ask a friend, someone who knows you in your Christian journey and say, you've watched me. Here's a list of gifts that the Bible talks about. Do you see me? as being good at any one of those things? And they say, oh, sure I do. I see you as this one or this one or this one. There's a third thing that you can do. Just try things. See, don't worry about finding just one. Start trying things. They say, oh, they're looking for a fourth grade Sunday school teacher. I don't know if I can teach, but I'll try. Or uh, they say, we're having an evangelistic outreach opportunity. Uh, I don't know if I have the gift of evangelism, but I'd like to try. Or there's a camping ministry this week, as, as many of the camps are in session. Um, I don't know if I like working with youth, but I'll try. So my advice to you is just try a whole bunch of different things. I heard a pastor say once, he said um, their church had tried many things over the years. And he said, when we called them programs, and if they didn't work, then we said, oh, that was terrible. We spent time, we spent money, and it was a complete failure. He said, but we learned something. We, we began to call everything an experiment. When an experiment goes bad, you say, well, I learned from the experiment, let's try something else. That's what I'd like you to do. Experiment. Try it. Just try it. And there's going to be one or two or maybe three things that you say, I love that. That is, that is fun. I could do that all day long. And there's going to be other things where you say, I can't do that if my life depended upon it. Uh, to be very honest with you, uh, there are spiritual gift assessments, and I've taken numerous ones over the years. Can I tell you what my bottom ones are, my worst ones? Faith. I am not a man of great faith. I come from a tradition of, of German stock where you just work hard and you fix all of your own problems. And so it is very difficult for me to trust. Number two, evangelism. Do I like to teach? Yes. But can I walk up in a conversation and say, hello, young lady, I'd like to tell you about Jesus Christ. Um, I get too scared. <laughs> I can't do it. I've had opportunities on, on some of my flights home where somebody's sitting beside me and, and there's something inside my heart that says, I should say something about Jesus Christ. You know, I can't. I can't. I'm too scared. And then all of a sudden, God opens up a conversation uh, on one of my trips home. From Moscow to Amsterdam a number of years ago, a very beautiful young lady was sitting beside me and, and she was reading a magazine and, and we began to talk. And we began to talk about the scriptures and she was interested. And by the time we landed, I had a chance to, to share. I gave her my Bible and we exchanged email addresses so that I could encourage her. It seemed like maybe she was a baby Christian. And so over the years, we have sent each other a couple of messages, but God even though I'm not gifted in evangelism, God opened a door for me to say things about Him. It was just marvelous, and it, it so excited me. So, two marks so far uh, of being a servant of Jesus Christ. We have integrity, and we serve in our area of giftedness. Now, let me give you number three. The third mark of a Christian servant is what I call dedication. Dedication. We find that in verse 15 when Paul says this, Practice these things. Devote yourself to them so that all may see your progress. Hey, Timothy, don't give up. Keep going. Be, be dedicated. Be, be resolved to keep going and, and to persevere. You're gifted in preaching and teaching. You, you've got to do it. Let me give you an example. Um, in the hometown in which I grew up, in 1992, our, our town, our school, had a young man who was a very, very good basketball player. In fact, our particular state, every year at the end of the basketball season, uh, the sports writers vote on someone and they call him Mr. Basketball. He is the best basketball player in our state for that year. This was the year 1992. 
This young man was in our high school, and ever since he was a, an eighth grader, a ninth grader, a tenth grader, he was a very good basketball player. He, he's the kind of guy that could, could go out and score 50 points a night if he wanted to. But he was very humble, and he was uh, very appreciative. He had very good teammates around him. He would score about 25 points, but he would make great passes, and, and he was a very good team player. And at the end of the year, uh, they won the state championship. We were the best team around. And at the end of the year, he was voted on and he was named Mr. Basketball in North Dakota in 1992. And we were so excited. And some people would look at him and say, oh, if I had the basketball gifts that he has, I could be Mr. Basketball too. It's true, he had some natural gifts. But what people like that did not understand is how many hours he practiced and practiced and practiced. I mean, he was there every day when the team practiced, but then he would come even, he would stay longer or he would come in in the early mornings and he would work on his shot and he would work on his shot and he would work on his shot and he would practice his dribbling and he would practice his, his different moves. Oftentimes, people never understood how hard he worked even though he was already gifted. What Paul is saying to Timothy, he said, the mark of a Christian servant is not simply that you're gifted, and Timothy, please do use your gifts, but Timothy, be dedicated, be passionate, work hard, persevere, you must keep going. Timothy, there's going to be no success apart from hard work as you use your gifts. That word he says, so that all may see your progress, the very last word of verse 15, is a military term. It's a military term for a battalion that leads the advance, penetrates enemy lines, and secures the victory. Timothy, I want you to be so dedicated to your work and to your passion that, that you use your gifts and your passions and you penetrate enemy lines and people will see the progress in you. Timothy, you're a young man. We can't escape that fact, but as they watch you, they see your integrity, they see how you served in the area of giftedness. They see your dedication. They say, ah, maybe we can follow this young man. Maybe he can teach us what to believe. So maybe in light of these last two things, we asked you, what are you gifted at? But I would also ask you in light of this particular one, what are you maybe needing some emphasis to push and to try a bit harder? What do you need to be more dedicated to? He says, Timothy, I want you to, to progress in that. I want you to devote yourself to those things. Have you benefited from this teaching ministry? Have you found TVS videos helpful and relevant? Please consider supporting TVS with your prayers and financial gifts. For more information, please visit www.tvseminary.com. The fourth quality is in verse 16. So we've seen integrity. We've seen serving in your area of giftedness. We have seen dedication. There's one more in verse 16. I call it balance. Balance. This is one of the key verses in this entire letter. Verse 16 says, Keep a close watch on yourself and on the teaching. Persist in this, for by so doing, you will save both yourselves and your hearers. What he's saying is, Timothy, there has to be a balance between your personal life and your teaching. You can't have one without the other. You need them both, and you need to keep them in balance. Watch your life, Timothy, how you spend your time, how you take care of your health, how you interact with people, what you do in your free time, what you do in your study time, what you do in your teaching time. Timothy, please, but in addition to watching your life, he says, I also want you to watch your doctrine. Timothy, don't get off the path yourself. Timothy, these false teachers are coming. If they come and they teach things and you begin to say, hmm, maybe that's right. Uh, maybe Paul made a mistake. He says, Timothy, watch your doctrine very closely. He says, Timothy, uh, and I would say it this way. One author said it this way, right doctrine without godly living is of no value. Godly living without right doctrine is impossible. I'd like to repeat that. 
right doctrine without godly living is of no value. Godly living without right doctrine is impossible. We need both. Our life and what we believe or our doctrine or our teaching must be compatible with each other. They must work together. So Timothy, the, the marks of a godly servant, if we take these ten commands and make them into four, are Timothy, please, I, I want you to have integrity. I want there to be a soundness or a wholeness. Timothy, I want you to serve in your area of giftedness. Try different things, but we already know, Timothy, that you're gifted as a teacher. Third, be dedicated. Devote yourself. Serve in the area in which you're passionate, in which God has gifted you. Don't give up. And fourth, he says, Timothy, keep your life and your doctrine in balance. If you overemphasize one over the other, you're going to get out of balance and then you're not going to be spiritually healthy. You may not be physically healthy because, Timothy, you are a leader in these churches. You must prepare yourself. In light of those four things, is there one of them where you say, you know, that's an area of strength for me or that's an area of weakness for me? Some of you are young leaders and maybe you've never served in a church before and you say, I I'm not sure where I fit. These would be great marks for you to pursue to find out what you're gifted in, to find out what you're passionate about, to find out how God has gifted you. Maybe you need to look at your life and say, my life is out of balance. I love God with all my heart, soul, mind, and strength, but my personal life is a mess. Or the other way, my personal life is great, my family is wonderful, my marriage is okay, but I'm really not sure what I believe anymore. That both of those things need to be held in health. So I would ask you those questions. In what areas is God challenging you to say to be like Timothy and to be encouraged to go forward? These are the most specific commands about Timothy's personal life in this entire letter. And you can take them for yourself by way of application just as I take them for me. So with that in mind, we've concluded chapter 4. We're going to take a short break and when we come back, we're going to find some more instructions but for different groups of people in the church. And we'll talk about that when we come back. So let's take a short break. Now he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will also supply and increase your store of seed and will enlarge the harvest of your righteousness. You will be enriched in every way so that you can be generous on every occasion. And through us, your generosity will result in thanksgiving to God. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 10, 11. How to give to TVS Ministry. You may give online at efta.org slash give now. In the description place, write Russia Distance Learning, account number 24109-0150. Or make checks out to EFCA. Write on the check memo line, Russian Distance Learning, account number 24109-0150. Mail to EFCA Donor Services, 901 East 78th Street, Minneapolis, Minnesota, 55420-1300 or send your gift through PayPal for tvs.gift at 